Being a popular internet personality can sometimes feel like a curse. Don't get me wrong, growing a massive audience for something you do in your off time can be pretty cool. However, it does come with its own problems. The larger a platform you have, the larger the expectations people have for you, and the larger the magnifying glass you'll be put under. The slightest mistakes you make can and probably will be broadcast for everyone on the internet to see, criticize, mock, whatever they see fit. On a completely unrelated tangent, gimmick accounts on Twitter, where the only good ones were the ones that posted an animal every hour. Since following most others would result in your feed having unsolicited OnlyFans advertising, the most infuriating thing one can do as a gimmick account is divert from the established gimmick. If I'm following you for hourly pictures of rabbits, why would I want you to give me this woman's ass or crypto advertisement on my timeline? This concept isn't one that's exactly foreign to the furry fandom, as there was a rather large gimmick account in our fandom that would unfortunately manage to draw the ire of many in the fandom when it would divert from its gimmick, that gimmick being to follow every furry on Twitter. Headed by a furry under the handle Grimless Stand, Furry Following was a Twitter gimmick account that would attempt to follow every furry on the site, a goal it obviously wouldn't fulfill, but the account did manage to follow a little above 20k before its deletion. Along with trying to follow every furry, the account would make an effort to actively retweet posts from members of the fandom, whether it was to signal boost furry creators or to mock anti-furry or anti-LGBT sentiments through a quote retweet. The account grew a pretty sizable amount of notoriety for what it did. However, like most gimmick accounts out there, it would only be a matter of time before the staff behind the account would shoot themselves in the foot. The ammo of choice for furry following being callout posts. I would assume I don't need to explain to you what a callout post is, given the purpose of one is in the name, but the late part of furry following's lifetime would be splattered with these. Some were justified in my view, except one that we'll be getting into later. But when it comes to these callouts, most of them surrounded the same issue. Someone in the fandom was indulging in or creating cub porn, such as the callout that would precede the account's downward slope. Tiger Stripes, formerly known as Tiger Cub, is a furry VTuber on Twitch. Alongside her adult-oriented streams, Tiger is a creator who has previously expressed her indifference when it comes to most taboo sexual content, cub porn in specific. In January of 2024, Furry following would bring attention to Tiger Stripes due to a years old commission of hers. Looking at the commission, it's pretty clear that it was cub porn. It was artwork of Tiger's child portion Sona in a provocative pose, versions both with and without underwear. This would garner Tiger some pushback in which she would respond with a thread, saying that despite the harassment, she would essentially continue to keep being herself. That self being a baby fur VR streamer that talks about weird sex shit. She then went on to talk about how she wished she could care enough about what people did in their spare time but just can't. Saying that, I don't care what kind of furry porn you masturbate to. I don't care who said what about who. I don't care at all. I'm tired of pretending I give a shit just to prop up opinions that in truth I have never thought about. Wear diapers? Yay, I'm proud of you for finding a way to smile for yourself in a nice safe manner. Remove E621 blacklist to jack off the taboo porn? Awesome. Remember to lock your door for some privacy and enjoy your personal time. Despite your opinion on what Tiger indulges in or the kind of people who would indulge in those taboos hidden by E621's global blacklist, this thread would bring another name into the spotlight. Timmy the Otter, another furry VR content creator one who's popped up in some of Tiger's content. You know, it's like a piggy bank. Sometimes we gotta be broken to realize our full potential. You just like things being put into your hole. That's why you're a piggy bank. <laughs> he would stand by Tiger's stance while going on a tangent about fantasy and reality, saying that cub porn doesn't mean pedophile. A statement I shouldn't even need to say I disagree with. This take would, understandably, garner some flack towards Timmy for condoning cub porn. Seeing this backlash, Timmy must have believed that he didn't explain himself clearly enough, because he would follow this up with an over 1600 word tweet, arguing his stance on cub, a stance that he had to elaborate on again after being challenged by another Twitter user, 
this time choosing to do so over the span of a 10 minute video. So being someone who preaches about hearing out both sides of an argument, you're probably expecting me to go through these statements and give my take on them, right? Yeah, that's gonna be a no from me. I'm sorry, but cup porn is something I don't think needs some sort of middle of the road take. It's quite literally just the furry version of Lolly and Shotokan. It shouldn't be hard to figure out what the problem there is. But luckily enough, this would all become null and void later in January, as Timmy would eventually disavow explicit cup content, saying that it shouldn't be celebrated, promoted, or considered any better than hate speech. So at least that saves us some trouble here. But the reason I've gone on mentioning this is because this would all be put under a magnifying glass by the furry following Twitter account. The account would share callout posts and engage in their own mocking of these pro-cub takes. Something that on paper sounds like a positive. However, this would become a constant on the account. Speaking out against those creators specifically to announce that the fandom should join together to disavow anyone who condones cub porn. Which while fully agreeable, would be the first signs of decline for this gimmick account. Not due to people disagreeing with the sentiment but due to the account's intentions becoming misguided. You see, usually when you want to call someone out for shitty behavior, it's best to go for a clean and straightforward shot. You shouldn't need to try to appeal to emotion for people to think that what a person did was gross. If it is, most people will certainly pick up on it. Grimm and his staff didn't entirely understand this, which is why the callouts and quote tweets they made on the account would come off as grandstanding or obnoxious to some. While I can't exactly show examples of this due to the account getting nuked, you'll see what I mean as I introduce the account's next target. But to do so, we'll have to play a bit of catch up by going back to 2022. To start this off, let me introduce a prominent figure in the drama this gimmick account would soon be a part of. JT Wuski is another furry VTuber on Twitch, but easily one of the largest I'll be mentioning in this video. While his more high energy style of streaming isn't for me personally, it isn't too hard to see just how popular he's become over his time streaming. His near 30,000 followers on Twitch and his just over 90,000 on Twitter make it pretty obvious just how many adore JT and the content he creates. However, he would find himself amidst a controversy back in November of 2022. On the 21st, JT would post a video with the caption, Just a week away, presumably referring to Midwest Fur Fest of that year. In the video, you have another furry, Cheka Yin, spanking JT with a paddle. Wait, do I do all three or just two more? All three. What's the significance of this, you might be asking? Well, JT would post this video onto his main Twitter account, something that didn't exactly sit right with the furry following account. The following day, the post would be quote retweeted by furry following, criticizing JT for posting this to his main account. The caption would read, not to be that guy, but as a content creator, shouldn't you not be putting spanking stills on main to your minor filled audience? This isn't like a bunch of adults in private. JT made it a public thing now. Like, they have a full AD account for that. Looking at the video myself, I will say that while nearing the suggestive side of things, I don't really believe this to be inherently sexual. Some might disagree with me here, and trust me, with the moan after the second spank and the good boy comments, I do get why some would see it as bad, but personally I don't see it as anything different from someone getting spanked at a Hobber house, you know? Regardless, a number of Twitter users would voice their disdain with JT, telling him that there are minors who follow him on Twitter and that he should be more careful with what he posts on main. In response, JT would post a 12 tweet thread on January 25th, 
He was started by saying that he does not have any obligation to label his Twitter account as safe for work or family friendly, as he's been tweeting on the platform for three years and has tweeted the same things and such because it's his Twitter. He also talks about how no one can control what a minor views other than their own caretakers, and that placing a label on their account wouldn't make it easier to comb through who follows him. He then points out how the scrutiny for this he received was downright ridiculous, as he's made a number of suggestive tweets in the past because he's simply an adult running their account. Now, despite acknowledging that applying the label wouldn't be much use, he regrettingly decided to go through with it, mostly to prevent a similar controversy from occurring in the future. And that would essentially be the last of the beef between these two accounts. Well, at least until about a year later. On February 1st, 2024, a user under the handle FurryEXP, also known as Chronic, would post a tweet bringing attention to a piece of artwork that popped up in their feed. Dated May 31st, 2022, the artwork shows the Sonas of JT Wusky, as well as Jedicus, the furry cub artist responsible for the piece, engaged in sexual activity. Given the proportions of their characters in this piece, this was seen by most to be cub porn of the two, and was then spread as such. The traction this post received came in thanks to the furry following Twitter account, who would quote retweet it saying, Pop you fur try not to commission kids having sex with each other challenge? Impossible. JT would soon catch wind of the allegation being spread and would tweet about it somewhat vaguely, saying that he was tired of having to deal with people who have him blocked trying to cancel him. He continued, They tried to expose me for gift art I got that was from two years ago, that literally shows my friend at the time and I licking each other's paws. I'm not into baby first slash child stuff, and I don't judge people that do, but obviously it's bad when it's porn related. That art was not that by any means at all, and I would have immediately told them that I don't give permission if I saw it as something related to child porn. I'm just done dealing with people trying to find dumbass reasons to cancel me when I literally don't do anything cancelable. I'm just a dog on the internet. This could be considered a decent response, but given it was rather vague about the art in question, people would only grow more skeptical. Because regardless of JT announcing that he was against cub content, Jedicus, the artist as well as the other character in the image, has no issue drawing it himself. He's even been called out for creating the material in the past, stating that he's never once been inappropriate with a minor, IRL or online, and uses the content to cope with his own CSA, which... Whatever works, I guess. Although it should be noted that Jedicus did make a separate Twitter and an Ink Bunny account to post content he deems as cub. The account the art with JT was posted to is listed as his non cub, not safe for work account, emphasizing that stubby proportions and big eyes don't equal cub. So that would give ample doubt as to if the art with JT could be considered cub or just chibi esque proportions. A doubt I personally don't like at all, but hey, what can you do? As the day went by, furry following would continue to condemn JT for how they responded to the drama. However, it seemed as if the people behind the account had more of an issue with JT defending Jedicus than the art itself, as they could be found digging up a post from Jedicus's Ink Bunny, presenting an explicit excerpt from one of his Ink Bunny posts, describing a golden retriever father molesting his seven-year-old son. While researching for this video, I found the piece this excerpt was connected to and saw that it was posted in December of 2023. However, finding this only made me more suspicious of Jedicus. In JT's case, it made me wonder if he was aware that Jedicus was posting this stuff, something that wouldn't be answered until later on. But as we're still on February 1st, the only other statement we get from JT this day was a screenshot leaked from his After Dark account. He quote tweeted the artwork in question with the caption, This is literally not child porn. It's a gift art they made me when they visited my place and we licked each other's feet. The fact that people are trying to dig into something that's not there is honestly so ridiculous. I'm not into baby or whatever the fuck. Furry following would post a screenshot of this saying that JT was defending Jedicus, an open cup porn artist, by calling them a friend and saying that he hung out with them. While I don't believe that this was the point of JT's tweet, 
The usage of the word friend understandably raised some red flags given Jeticus's online footprint, but while this was the last thing JT would say about this controversy on the first, this wouldn't stop furry following from continuing to talk about the controversy. The account would also take this time to sling other accusations, these aimed at users who were defending JT. Of the three named, however, it would be the mention of Vexium Swift that blew this drama even further out of proportion. Vexium Swift is another content creator who I personally think is a bit of a bellend, but don't tell anybody. Furry following, on the other hand, would make the damning accusation that Vexium had literally groomed a kid. Now, even though Vexium has had controversies due to the cropped porn he'd stick in his video thumbnails, the claim that he groomed a kid was claimed on this 20k follower account without any proof to accompany it. Even with Vexium asking the account to show the evidence he groomed a child, the account would instead taunt Vexium, bringing up how he exposes the minors in his audience to furry porn in response to Vexium threatening to sue. After this exchange, furry following would block Vexium, hide his reply, and put out a tweet saying, We're gonna close this whole thing out by saying this. We are following every furry, not the other way around. You don't have to be here, so leave if you want. We will not stay silent if we think someone has done something wrong, and we don't care how big. We'll never change that. Cloud Chaser and Hidden. Dude needs to stop making other people's crimes about them. Okay, but where's the proof he was a groomer, though? The thing is, we would never get that proof. Actually, we'd get the opposite due to the backlash the account had gotten. Later the same day, Grim would post onto the furry following account, saying that Chronic, or Furry EXP, was the mod on the account that accused Vexium of being a groomer, and that he would be taking accountability for this incident. He wrote, Hey, Grim here. I am personally taking this shit up here, as we had gotten an error in our reporting of our recent callout. Vexium Swift didn't groom a minor. One of my mods decided to be stupid as fuck, and randomly attack a bad dude. I'd like to say that I'm sorry to Vexium for that. We don't however agree with how Vexium treated their sudden change to 18 plus when they didn't let any of their audience know beforehand. This does not mean they groomed a kid though. It only means that they were stupid and didn't think before acting. We can only comment on what we know. Again, I'm sorry that my now former mod was a fucking dumbass. And you hold full right to be angry and are valid in attacking us. But our opinion on you being a reckless douche doesn't change. Also, we just kind of hate when you say, ah. Hope this clears things. This would in fact not clear things. It would just result in Vexium asking Grimm for proof of the fallout he and Chronic had over the false accusation. Proof that Grimm didn't have as he claims it happened in a voice call. He would simply take responsibility for what Chronic did. Even though Chronic made the accusation, not Grimm. Do keep a pin in this though. We'll come back to Chronic later. For now, we'll move on to the next day, February 2nd. After JT's initial response, he wouldn't waste any time returning to his usual Twitter posting. All while the cup porn allegations were still hot on the skillet. You'd have this text wall of daddy, this creature, and of course the video that would send these allegations into overdrive. Isn't it lovely? Oh. This video of JT singing Lovely by Billie Eilish and Khalid would spread infectiously, but not because of the video's own merits. As I mentioned, his initial response to the cub allegations was made a little over 24 hours before this was uploaded, and seeing as the situation was anything but resolved, People who came across this video took it as the furry rendition of Colleen Ballinger, memeing it into the ground just as they did her toxic gossip train. It also didn't help that this video would also send this drama outside of the fandom, only spreading the narrative that JT's response to cub point allegations was this video. Personally, I think it's pretty unfortunate this video got taken this way. But on the other hand, couldn't you wait until the allegations were put to rest to post something like this? The day after this music video was posted, JT would upload a more proper response to the situation at hand. He opens by addressing the artwork, 
seeing that he hadn't spoken to Jedekis in over a year and wasn't aware they drew Cubhorn, as he wouldn't condone their actions if they did. He would also state that, to him, the artwork Jedekis made of the two of them was two clearly adults doing Paul-related things to one another, something that he was getting constant and unnecessary harassment for. Personally, I don't know if I would say these two characters are clearly adults in this image. Unless you're familiar with Jedekis' art style, I could understand the confusion. Back to his statement though, he would claim that these attacks against himself were made with some form of jealousy or revenge in mind. That people were constantly targeting him for things that have no context whatsoever as a way to start a hellfire towards him. From the look of things, the attention this art piece was sending JT's way was starting to take its toll. This post ending off with him saying, Take this as you will, but I'm done dealing with this. Now, one could look at JT's statement about the accuser being jealous of him and brush it off as some sort of egotistical coping on his part. But what if it wasn't cope? What if he was onto something? Going back to February 1st, we would have a tweet from Grimm's ex-boyfriend known as Headset. He quote retweeted JT's initial response, saying that the person doing the callout was an alt account of their ex. He continued, Grimm had always had like a weird mega hate boner for JT, to the point where he'd really fabricate any story he can about him, like he's a pedo or stuff like that. Chronic is one of his alt accounts, and speaking through them lets him kind of make any free claims he wants. Headset alleged that Chronic was just Grimm's mouthpiece. He used the account to make takes that might not be well received. That way, if any pushback fell into those accounts, it didn't really matter to Grimm because he wasn't the one making the take, it was someone else. So naturally, on February 3rd, Grimm would post about his relationship with Headset in response, primarily their breakup. Grimm stated that after visiting him, Headset had become controlling over him with constant messages, badmouthing Grimm with his friends and implying that Grimm was cheating on him. Grimm also states that after the breakup, Headset had gaslit Grimm's friends into thinking he hated them, that he didn't care about them. He finishes the thread off by noting that he hates JT and what he stands for, but not enough to go out of his way to ruin their life. So it sounds as if Grimm and Headset had a pretty messy breakup, but something seems to be missing out of this response. Not once did Grimm mention the allegation of Chronic being an alt account of his, however it would be mentioned in Headset's response to Grimm's thread. Headset responded to these allegations by first starting with the explanation that Grimm would be hard to reach via text sometimes, resulting in Headset needing to DM him often just for Grimm to respond after a few days. In regards to Grimm's friends, Headset makes it known that many of the people who hung around Grimm were only there out of respect for him being Headset's boyfriend, and that once the relationship was over, those people had no reason to interact with Grimm anymore. Ouch. Headset elaborates by noting how Grimm treated his friends was disrespectful, that Grimm had actively tried to recruit them into personal attacks on creators, keeping conversations about drama, and belittling them by apparently saying things like, Wow, I guess they can't have a conversation about politics. What a baby. Grievance airing aside, the point of importance in this thread would be where Headset would give an entire list of alternate accounts Grimm had at his disposal, a number of which being used in an effort to provide Grimm with some form of tokenism. Attaching minorities to these alternates as if they were identities in Limpus Company. Of the ones listed, we have Grimm's main account, his IRL account, Stockman, the gimmick account, Furry Following, the failed gimmick account, Douche Radar, you have G4 Summit and Conway Croc being his token black alternates, Chronic or Furry EXP being the token trans alternate, as well as Gamble the Lion and No One Cares 12796. That's eight alternate Twitter accounts in total. Nine more than a healthy person should have. But with that all being said, it should be noted that not all of these accounts were completely proven to be Grimm's. However, one account would certainly lend credence to the claim. Around the same time Headset posted his thread responding to Grimm, a user by the handle of It's Quint would post their own Twitter thread talking about Grimm. It would retread a lot of the same ground we've talked about already. Apart from something crucial that they noticed about one of the mentioned alternate accounts, Chronic. In an attempt to prove that they weren't an alternate account, Furry EXP would post this selfie, captioned, Do I look like Grimm at all? We don't even live within a thousand miles of each other. Seriously, get help. 
The reason this selfie is of note is because before it was posted, the furry EXP account had the title Haver of Afro in its bio, and around the time this image gets posted, that title mysteriously disappears. And if Chronic no longer being the Haver of Afro didn't seem suspicious enough, this thread being created by Quint would result in each of the listed accounts being deleted within moments of one another. This including Grimm's main account as well as furry following. This deletion would get a notice from JT, who would mention it in a tweet soon after, saying, Crazy how in the span of 72 hours, you make everyone harass me, say heinous things about me, then when you're called out for your bullshit, this is your response. I rest my case. Now, this would be a deserved jab from JT if it weren't for the fact that A. Grim running multiple alternate accounts only discredited the allegations rather than disproved them, and B. That his own handling of said allegations was objectively subpar. It's one thing maybe wording things wrong when addressing allegations, it's another to grave dance on your detractors as if their accounts being deactivated disproves the allegations. Users would express their disdain with this tweet of JT's in the quote tweets while minutes after its posting, Grim would make an announcement in his Discord server. It would read, Due to recent shit, I'm done with Twitter and following every furry. I have an abusive ex attacking me and lying about shit just for brownie points of a big streamer. His weird delusion has gotten to doxing my name on Twitter and assuming that my friends from college are somehow me. I'm going to the hospital to get help. I mentally can't be trusted around things that can hurt me. I'm also done with content creation. I can't do it anymore and if I did, I'd kill myself today. I have had threats on my family and threats on my life. I've had people take pictures from outside my house. I cannot do this anymore. I hope you all understand. So in this message, you have Grimm addressing Headset as an abusive ex that's lying about him to be in JT's favor. He also claims that the accused alternate accounts aren't him, but friends of his from college. These are claims that are made without any real form of evidence, something that isn't exactly unorthodox given the mental state he's describing. However, this statement would be contradicted in the following day. Contradicted by none other than himself. On February 4th, Grimm would reactivate his Twitter account to share a 15 minute video statement that would clarify some of the accusations being made and topics regarding the entire drama. There's just one issue. The video had been deleted by the time I started research, leaving me with only the excerpts listed in a Google document from the user the Big Boofer, 9 out of 10 username. While this document is a bit biased in favor of JT, it does a proper job of compiling the majority of what's happened during this ordeal, except for archiving the full video unfortunately. But of the excerpts transcribed here, it shed a bit of light on Grimm's actions throughout the ordeal, such as Grimm admitting that the alternate accounts named off by headset were in fact his. He would then go into why he made those fake identities as diverse as he did, saying, A few of those alts were ethnic minorities, and at the time, I created those alts in order to look like regular, everyday people. I hid them to where, when you looked at them, you thought that they were just a regular person. The only reason why I used those alts was to up the like value on my tweets in order so they could be seen more, and that's fucked up. You can't see things clearly when you're in that deep. I don't have any commentary on this. This just makes me feel bad for him. Grimm also tries to take some accountability for his actions by stating that Headset was in the right for calling him out on using his alt accounts to both tokenize minorities as well as target JT with such venom. And from here, the allegations would more appropriately fade out. JT would retweet the thread made to compile these events, and Grimm would deactivate his Twitter soon after sharing the video statement that would be deleted not too soon after that. You do have the occasional re-emergence of JT's inopportune singing during the situation, but other than that, things appear to have mellowed out with very little resistance. So what is there to take from this? Well, from Grimm's side, deciding to take a hiatus from the internet is probably the best thing he could do for himself. I'm no psychologist, but I think that most people would say that if you're creating multiple alt accounts to not only boost your online engagement artificially, 
But to throw accusations with no real aim using a black trans or gimmick account mask in an attempt to shield from any fallout, maybe you should turn off the screen and really think over if what you're doing is healthy. As for JT Wesky, he responded to these allegations terribly. I'm not, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. To put it in the simplest way possible, JT was hard carried by those around him. I'm not even saying this because the most damning counter evidence came from onlookers and people grim scorn in the past. I'm saying it because of what his inclusion to that counter evidence was. His initial response being a rant on how he isn't into baby fur and is tired of dealing with people trying to cancel him. His immediate return to normalcy despite the allegations not being put to rest. The response afterwards that was essentially an elaboration on the first followed up with a snarky grave dancing post after others had put the work in. No post from JT himself really does anything to counter the initial claim being made of JT indulging in cub content. Yes, in the Google Doc Big Boofer made, he supplied screenshots of the last time he was in contact with Jeticus, that being March 2023 at the latest. His past response only vaguely mentions their cut and contact, focusing more on saying, according to Jeticus, this image isn't cub. They're clearly two adult characters. I understand getting hit with false allegations can leave a person heated, but there comes a time where you have to drop the whining about cancel culture and just shoot straight. Hindsight is 2020, sure, but after reviewing the situation, all JT really had to say in his response was that Jeticus, as the artist, told him it wasn't Cub, he isn't into Cub porn, and he broke off contact with Jeticus. Those three bullet points alone would have left the allegation dead in the water. Instead, it became a three to four day circus act that still lingers around his Twitter presence to this day, albeit a lot easier for him to ignore, I assume. So, in the end of all of this, the only things that can be learned are that gimmick accounts are probably the worst place to make callouts using malicious grudges as the base, and that the best thing you can do when responding to false allegations is to go quiet, collect your thoughts and information, and counter them in one organized swoop. That's really it. Save the anger, no vague, people are jealous and trying to cancel me, a straight, calm and collected shot is all it takes. This situation is one that went on far longer than it needed to, despite it all mostly taking place within the first four days of January. But that being said, hopefully I was able to run you through what went down over those days. I've been Benji, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and stay safe out there. Funding for this program was made possible by...